Anyway, so so this is this is a new format uh, for us. We're we're trying this out, uh, inspired by Mr. Yancey Wright, who's who's with us today from from Puerto Rico, and uh, Yancey does a lot of really really cool online workshops and work sessions around uh, emotional wellness, around sustainability, and and so much great stuff. And uh, so he said, you know, I'm going to need faces to see how how we're how we're impacting people so so we invited folks to actually come and participate and and you know what we're talking about overwhelm we're talking about stress relief we're talking about all that so we'll we'll mute you guys but we'll definitely keep your faces on and uh and then when we get to q a we'll we'll definitely invite you guys to to speak up and to share some of your own thoughts and and again lisa and jennifer in particular uh you know some of the topics that we're going to touch on is is how mental wellness um, really imp uh, uh, informs how designers need to think about wellness in general for their clients. Uh, so it's, but it's really driven by a much deeper conversation. We have Laura here to kind of lead that uh, talk, but during the Q and A, we definitely want you guys to chime in and, and share some of your own stories, which I think are going to be really, really important. So welcome and thank you for kind of making making the time to kind of hop on in here with us. Well, I think too that it's right. a, it's it's the changing the format up, which is uh, just super exciting, and I can't wait to to uh, to sort of experience this. Yancy, everything that you've already taken us through ahead of time has been really cool. So uh, so everyone, buckle up. This is going to be this is going to be a good time. Yeah. Buckle, up. buckle up, everyone. This is Florence. And um, just a note, I'm going to mute everybody. So our um, lovely panel has a minute to kind of present some materials and and kind of start the discussion. And then um, we will definitely um, ask you guys to join the conversation later on. Uh, so stay tuned, we're about to go live on Facebook. Pretty quiet. We play the waiting game. I know we need your music, Yancy. But <laughs> 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 really I've never heard this crowd this quiet ever. <laughs> we started listening up with that wonderful music that Yancy was playing. You can you can hit it. You can hit it with some music. We're good with it. Hit it. She's like, okay. Ultimate stress relief program. We're good. It's a tiny bit better than elevator music. It's just like a little <laughs> it's, bit more. It's, it's, it's although I think I've heard it in a Marriott before. <laughs> oh, sure. No. In the lobby. In the right. lobby. Well, that's because I spent half my life in a Marriott. Music and not elevator music, right? <laughs> so there's a difference. Yeah, it's pushing me towards the uh, towards the bar though. Oh. And we're live. We're live on Facebook. So this is where we're supposed to be focused. So, hey, KBI Group, welcome to uh, another episode of Design Uncut. I'm Veronica Miller, one of your trusty hosts. And this time we've totally switched up the format, which is why you're seeing lots of faces right now. And that's exactly how we want it, because we are ready to embark on a very interactive session with our amazing guest speakers today. Uh, this is part two of uh, wellness and the impact of design on wellness, especially around emotional wellness today. And I've got my trusty co-host with me, Katie McGregor Bennett. Hey, 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 everyone. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm so excited about today's show, you guys. So we've had several conversations already with Yancey and crew. And uh, just, just so excited to have you go through this process and also with the format change here. Uh, we're going to want to hear feedback on this one afterwards, boys and girls. This is going to be this is going to be a good time. So thanks for joining us today. And uh, let's let's do this. Well, we're, we're going to give Martha Orlana our tr our wonderful sponsor. Uh, of Mr. Steam of fame, of course, uh, credit for having set this as well. So Yancey was saying, you know, I definitely want to see some faces uh, that are uh, to see how we're impacting, how we're connecting with folks. And and especially when we're doing a workshop, how, uh, how people respond to it. But Martha was also saying, I want to see my people, you know? Miss you guys. Got to see the folks. Dawn just joined us. So this is, I think this is great. We, we need all the human connection that we can possibly get. So 
hopefully this is working really well. So um, wanted to introduce Katie and I, we can, we can share this. We have on the designer side, Laura Mueller of Four Point Design Build in LA. How's hey, LA everybody. today? Is it smoky? Um, I'm in a bubble in my little office, so I tend to uh, be in a completely different world in here, but it's better. It's been cooler. It's been a little bit, uh, had a little fog in the air, so it's actually been quite a relief uh, for California. So yeah, it's a little bit better. I'll take yeah. it. And that bubble, I think we're kind of all in one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually part of why we're talking today. Exactly. So. Um, and, and, and then we have Yancey, and Yancey Wright is coming to us. Uh, he's the owner of our um, Alterna Vita Leadership. He's going to do this balcony thing again. He likes to do the balcony thing in he's Puerto a Rico. Bubble. Yeah. <laughs> you, you asked how things are going, so I just figured I'd come out here and take a look with you all and see how things are going. <laughs> how are they going? How, how, how are they going? Uh, yes. It's good. Yeah, maybe, it's good. Maybe it's really it's good. cold. Maybe it's really cool. Please don't. And, and so we've had like three rehearsals with Yancey just because there was so much stuff to talk about. And he's standing out there eating mango leaves. We're not, it's not okay. It's just not okay. But <laughs> this has inspired us to, uh, for 2021, we're all going down there. So uh, anybody interested in doing that, uh, we'll have more to share with you about that because that's, you have an amazing retreat. So um, Yancy, you know what, why don't you just take it away and kind of walk us a little bit through what you guys are actually doing down there. So thank you. Uh, welcome everybody. What we're up to is, um, well, I'll get a little more into my, the details of my introduction in a bit, but essentially I, I'm a guide to help support people, uh, especially leaders and designers with uh, the unconscious realm of things that might be creating stress, overwhelm, and anxiety. So I have a, a retreat space for people to come to when we're able to do things in person. And otherwise, I, I lead a lot of uh, retreats and team building for different companies, uh, whether it's green building manufacturers or architects, interior designers, or other companies to help support creating a culture of well-being. So that's, that's kind of in essence what I'm up to down here. And, and we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more because I think there's some really key components for design professionals to think about. And it's all about understanding how to actually live the life before you can share it with your client. Otherwise it's just selling. Uh, and that's, that's too superficial for the world that we live in. So I think this is a really important conversation. And, and Laura, uh, you're not just a designer and uh, not just a design build firm, but your personal story and the way you work with your clients really, really kind of takes uh, wellness uh, to heart, really kind of on every project, right? Uh, yeah, it definitely does. I think just uh, just the sheer fact of I've had a life experience that has landed me in a uh, a reality check of of education when it comes to um, special needs, and uh, in particular when we're dealing with anxiety, when we have high anxiety, we're dealing with depression, we have uh, some any sort of a creative learning, uh, spectrum learning, spectrum living. These are you know. 30 years ago, we didn't have as much information. So I, I, I did learn the hard way. I it was insatiable about learning all that I could get my hands on. And then just practicing applying these different tools and trial and error uh, eventually led me to have, you know, quite a knowledge of um, how to incorporate design details and elements and what kind of questions to ask um, clients and, um, and families so that we can interpret uh, ways to help reduce the stress and help to apply these tools and these experiences to data-driven design and then actually execute it into a design space. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of experience and there's a lot of passion behind that. So, And I, um, I love that there is a data-driven component there. So it's not just, a, ooh, this feels yummy, but there's more to it than that. And, and one of those design tools, I understand that's uh, very helpful in, in getting some of those impacting impacting the way we live is of course steam martha um so if you want to give us a quick intro about yourself uh and uh, mr steam and then we'll have you walk us through a couple of slides and, and tell us a little bit more about the emotional benefits of steam well hi everybody good to see you and it is 75 degrees and sunny 
out here in, in, in Southern California. So <laughs> we, 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 I think we're having a good day today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's so great to, to be with you all. Uh, uh, I'm uh, vice president of sales and marketing for Mr. Steam. I've been doing that for uh, a few years. Uh, and uh, what I love about what I do is the tag name that we use. It's Feel Good Inc. Because what we do is it's about feeling good. It's about bringing that level of, of, of uh, uh, um, emotion and physicality, goodness, to your, your, your uh, uh, shower. So uh, that, that's, that's it in a nutshell, feel good ink. Uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been married to, to a, 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 some of you know my wife, and she is going to be really upset about with this particular uh, topic that we're talking about. She's a she's a psychologist, a therapist. So we we we're sort of trying to put her out of business. But we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> well, and and actually, we're going to have her on as a speaker. She just doesn't know that yet. Um, since we're only kicking <laughs> yeah. off the topic here today, I've just made that up. But I think that's what we're going to run with because now there I see. <laughs> uh, do you want me to go through some of the please? Uh, yeah, yeah. Now? all right. So through if, you some slides. if you don't mind, I'm just going to go through some basic, uh, and I, we, we were talking about yesterday, what it is that, that we all bring to the table. And here is uh, really Yancey with the emotional wellness topic. Then, of course, we have Laura with the design, and we have the tool, one of the tools, which is STEAM. And just on that, we are going to uh, talk about uh, what is emotional wellness? And I think Yancey will cover that. Uh, we picked out some uh, from UC Davis or the World Health Organization as to how to handle stress. And it's, stress seems to be a common theme with emotional wellness. Uh, ever had one of these days, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, last night. <laughs> I, I, we're really looking at, at, at people changing the way they live now. I mean, they have to work from home. They have their kids at home. They have to do uh, a, a lot of overwhelming stuff. And in ways to support the emotional and physical wellness and is, is about de-stressing, of course, detoxifying, getting sleep, eating the right things, right? This is things that we know for forever and ever. And yet it's always like, oh, I should pay thousands of dollars to get this message, right? So this is what it always comes down to. It's emotional wellness, right? Wellness is, is, is holistic. Uh, and, you know, there's stress causes all kinds of weird things in your body, right? It raises blood pressure, the blood sugar goes off, uh, leads to uh, frustration. Long-term stress can have major, major problems in your physical and, and mental uh, health. Uh, it's time to take time for us, each one of us, right? And this is where Laura comes in, right? Creating a calm, tranquil, and healthy environment right? Uh, that helps to reduce stress. There's several points uh, in, in elements in, in, in the way that you design uh, for, for wellness, right? It has to do with what, oh, oh, I just missed that, with air purification, color, and I think Laura will definitely uh, address that. Uh, emotional therapies we talked about, right? How do you have a positive impact on them? Well, we come up with a tool that's called therapies, right? And our therapy are, it's, it's ancient. It goes back thousands of years throughout every single civilization. There's been steam. Why? Because it's, it's naturally holistic, healthy for you. It detoxes, it removes impurities. It, it supports a respiratory health. So if you have a cold, it's an amazing system to use. Uh, it enhances relaxation and of course sleep and enhances the overall wellness. Uh, we also have chromotherapy right? Light changes the way you see everything. I think from a designer standpoint, you guys can absolutely uh, understand that. Uh, certain colors can be calming. Certain colors could be energizing, right? Think of McDonald's, right? Their color is not pink. Their color is red and yellow, right? And, and that's because they want to create a certain uh, mood for kids. Uh, of course, audio therapy, uh, sound music, it's been around forever. And there's so many websites uh, and so many articles on music therapy. Uh, it's been shown to, to have such an effect on, on many disorders, progressive disorders like Parkinson's and, and Alzheimer's. And I can tell you that from, from, from my personal uh, 
uh, interaction with that. My mom has Alzheimer's and yet she remembers all the lyrics to certain songs. It, 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 it's really, it's amazing. And of course, I think one of the original senses, the aromatherapy, uh, a primordial sense has such a powerful effect to transport you to, if you remember a, a particular scent, you go, oh, I remember I was in the park at that time. And it's just uh, amazing that you can have all those sounds and all that 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 that, that uh, uh, aromatherapy and color therapy in your shower, and that takes it, all the co those components, and you're you're now in 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 your own uh, cocoon. Uh, you can have uh, uh, chakra oils that we developed specifically to match each of the chakras, right? To uh, spark creativity, to uh, help realign life's rhythms, right? To communicate, share deliveries. Uh, the violet nirvana, combination of time, place, and being. So more wellness benefits for STEAM. It includes all the respiratory health, especially now more than ever, more than ever, right? If somebody has a little bit of a cough, a little sore throat, they're freaking out, it's time for them to go into STEAM. And that will really re, re, reinforce and open up the air sacs and allow the, 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 the breathing mechanism in your body to function better. Uh, holistic health standpoint, right? It removes toxins from the body. It uh, may relieve pain and discomfort for joints. People that have some uh, arthritis uh, find it helpful. And of course, it leaves you with a glowing skin, right? It, it, it allows you to hydrate your skin. It uh, actually also, guys love it when they can shave in, in, in the steam shower. Uh, and physical wellness, if you're uh, uh, boost your metabolism, right? The temperature in a steam room is about 110, 115 degrees. So you're a 98 something. And then just that difference, it's improving your metabolism. It's making your heart work faster and your blood's pumping uh, and uh, removes lactic acid from overworked muscles. And overall, you got the entire well-being, right? Which is the stress, the relaxation. You can sleep better. Uh, it actually, it's great for people that have jet lag. Uh, and combine it with uh, the other therapies, we really are going to be able to put some some uh, therapists. I got you that here uh, out of business. Uh, and the company that makes it is is uh, my company. We we've been in business for over a hundred years. We've been making boilers for the U.S. Navy for the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, no one knows more about how to make steam that, that, than we do. Uh, we've innovating steam since 1917 with the first touch steam control with a linear steam head and just numerous other products to to mention go to our website or call me uh and uh that's just my quick uh uh it's about emotional wellness and steam so i'm gonna give it right back to you veronica with that how's that yeah. That was the that was the fastest thing I've ever heard you do, Martha. Wow, that's you know we always <laughs> want to keep with the deck behind type, it. But the, <laughs> the reality is, so first of all, you know, a lot of what you do is really super educational. Um, so uh, we definitely encourage folks, and I know we'll, we'll drop a bunch of links to various pieces of content that Mr. Steam has has put forth over the years in terms of benefits, but also in terms of what designers need to think about from a technical perspective. Uh, we'll have those in the comment section in the Facebook live chat today so folks can get in here and read up uh, on this. You need to know the, the technical ins and outs as well as all of the benefits. So we'll, we'll have all that. And then Martha is here uh, for the rest of the hour or however long we want to go. I'll be here all week. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to tip the waitress. <laughs> or or Katie and I, whichever. whichever. We're, we're not saying you need to, but if you want to, please, we'll drop our address. Um, just make sure, it, you know, nice presents. So uh, we're spoiled, right, Katie? Well, the I mean, the, the one thing of. I forgot to mention, by the way, that for those that are paying attention, there is a little gift box of aromatherapy oh. chakra oils that we will be providing. Florence, make sure you get their names and addresses so we can do that. And just because I've seen all my wonderful friends, we're going to give them a little wellness pack that includes some, some goodies that you haven't even seen, Veronica. 
Oh. But, but, but am I a friend? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but. Oh, I think she gave <laughs> question. Just, just change her name and put the same address. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. Yeah, I'll it. change my name. I'll be, uh, yeah, I'll come up with a cool name. I'm going to invent a cool name. All right. I like that Martha so, is advising us to rig the system. That's and, great. and Linda Kafka is asking, <laughs> by the way, we have so many people here commenting and saying, thank you, Martha. And uh, Linda Kafka is asking if Canadians can participate in this. Absolutely. I'm going to say, yeah, absolutely. Right? Canada. Absolutely. Yes, of course. <laughs> Canada is cool. So yes, we like Canadians, absolutely. especially if they let us in. Absolutely. So <laughs> I wanted to move over to Yancey because, you know, we've, we're going to give you the floor and we're going to have you walk us through a soundbite of what otherwise is a much longer workshop that you do. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to drop a link in the comment section afterwards to whenever you have another workshop coming up in full length that people should participate in. I think that would be really helpful. Thank you. Welcome everybody. I'm actually gonna ask, uh, there's a few of you, most of you have your videos on. Um, Amanda, Madison, Evelyn, if you guys could turn your videos on, that would be so awesome. Uh, and I'm gonna ask you to stand up with me for a second. And actually, let's see. Um, give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear the music. Yeah, okay. And what, what we're going to do is because most of us, I make up that most of you all have been spending so much time in your heads that you forgot that there's this amazing body connected to it. So um, all I'm going to ask is that you just kind of like, is the music loud enough or you want a little louder? Louder. 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 Okay. I'll turn it up just a hair. And I want you to just kind of like bounce to the rhythm. Like, silly, don't, I mean, if you're worried about someone looking at you, just close your eyes. All right, that's oh, it's not. Right. Nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. Pick, Dance pick like nobody's watching. Move your, move your arms out. Shake. Shake them up over your head. Shake them down below. And then just kind of notice what's not bouncing. Yeah, I know it's what you're thinking. Bouncing. I know you're thinking those yeah, so earlobes are hard to bounce. Okay, now you sh shake your one leg out. Just shake one leg out. We're not gonna do the hokey pokey, but just shake one leg if you can. Do some balancing here. And then shake your left leg, good. All right, and then just one really good, just random shake. All right, I'm gonna stop there. I don't wanna get you too, too scared about what's ahead. <laughs> Thanks oh, for participating. We're doing something else? Yes! <laughs> so, so those yeah. pattern interrupts are so, so key for keeping us going um, throughout our workday because we're spending our, our time so locked into this computer, on Zoom meetings, all this stuff in our head. And a lot of what I do, I, I mean, I studied architecture. I worked in the green building industry for like 15 years and ended up with a career burnout. And so the thing that probably qualifies me most around well-being is the last seven years, I've just literally dove into like, how did that happen? How did this career burnout happen? And how can I make sure that doesn't happen again? And, and then I ended up believing it was a good idea to teach others. Now, raise your hands if you've ever had a career burnout or just a burnout in general. Raise your hands if we've had, if we're in the middle of one. Yeah, okay, well, that's another scenario. The, the That's thing another about, day. The thing about burnout is you don't, I, I, my experience of it is I didn't know I was in it until it was already done. I was already burnt. And so what's so important to acknowledge is to start to understand and tune into how much are you actually taking care of yourself? Like raise your hands if you, you feel confidently that you're doing a really good job with your self-care. Jeffrey, Lisa. Okay. So two of you, um, and, and, and just think about that for a minute, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show a slide because what I get curious about is whether or not you guys are actually, since you're all designers, um, can you guys see my screen okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many of you are designing your lifestyle as if it were a design project? Raise your hands. Anybody? We, we are so good at spending all of our time and our entire life, can, our career can go by and we're so focused externally on our projects that we forget to actually design our lifestyle. And that's what was going on for me. And, and uh, at age 37, I was, I was in the ICU 
with the doctor handing me a sheet of paper saying, we're going to have to stop your heart and it may not restart. Please sign here to not hold us liable. And so that for me was a wake up call. And, and I noticed that as a man, most men don't try to change anything until something breaks. And so for me, the heart was actually a pretty important one to wake me up. And so what's interesting to note here is that we develop most of our behaviors by age nine, like 95% of our behaviors are developed by age nine. And so a lot of the things that we um, intentionally focus on with our design projects, we can start to shape and shift and maybe even look at how are we designing our lifestyle? How do we want our lifestyle to be and how do we want it to end? Because there is a beginning and an end and everything in nature has a beginning and an end. And so that's what I'm, I'm going to talk about um, three steps towards a wellness lifestyle. And I, I could go on about most of these much longer than I'll go on about them today. But I'm going to I decided to share some that are a little bit out there. One of them is do the opposite of what you think you have time for as it relates to your self-care. So every time you think or every time you hear yourself say, oh, I don't really have time for that. I invite you to actually do the opposite. First, catch yourself when you say you don't have time for it and then do the opposite if it, if it can enhance your self-care. The second thing I'll talk about is noticing what distracts you from your emotions. And we talked a little bit about the senses beginning out uh, and, and, and how often we're just getting distracted from our own emotional intelligence or our own ability to be in tune with our senses. And then going out in nature, that seems like a no-brainer, but there's actually some great benefits to that as well. So doing the opposite what do you mean do the opposite? Well, what I mean is like, well, uh, maybe I have a presentation coming up and sometimes I'll feel really tired. And so instead of like trying to prep more for that presentation, I'll do a 10 minute meditation nap. And what's interesting is, is uh, the, the studies behind napping. Well, one of them, NASA found that, you know, napping had a 34% improvement in reaction time and a two times increase in alertness when they studied a bunch of um, astronauts. And then UC Berkeley found that regular nappers were twice as likely to solve complex problems as non-nappers. Bottom line is that I find a typically like a 30 to 40% increase by taking in my productivity by taking 10 minutes just to do a, a meditation nap. I call it a meditation nap because I'll meditate for like five minutes. I slip into a light sleep and then pop right out. Breathing, breathing's another one. Like we're gonna breathe into our belly in just a second, but um, these things may sound super simple, but like deep belly breathing, if you're not belly breathing, like how many of you are belly breathing right now? Like really pushing that belly out. A few of you. Okay. For those of you that aren't, and if you notice you're working and you're not breathing deep into your belly, it's because you're in fear. And, and when you're in fear, that can tend to constrict the belly. So what's great about taking a moment to just take a five second in breath or a five count in breath, do it with me. Just breathe. Like, I want you to exaggerate your belly, just fill it up and then let it out. That deep in breath, do, keep, keep going as I explain a little bit of the science. That oxygen to your brain actually helps stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which promotes a state of calmness. And so even taking three or five of those deep belly in breaths, when you notice you're not breathing into your belly, can help with your heart rate, lowering, lowering your heart rate can help uh, decrease your blood pressure and it can prevent the amygdala hijack, which is when your brain goes into this um, fight or flight mode. And so even if you're a leader and you lead groups, what I love to do is even taking three to five minutes to guide a mindful breathing technique, because when that happens, the level of cohesion or the level of coherence, coherence of the between the brain, the heart and the body, is so much more beneficial. Like it, it comes into place with a mindful technique that might only take three to four minutes. And people are typically more in harmony with each other. So while we may think, I don't have time for that, it actually creates a far more productive meeting. So again, just every time you think, I don't have time for that, like maybe you're, you're working from home and the house is messy and you're like, oh, I don't really have time to clean up. I've got too much to do today. I find that even 10 or 15 minutes of just tidying everything up helps me become far more efficient because otherwise that clutter just kind of clutters up my day. So keep, keep noticing yourself. I don't have time for that. Stop. And then actually take a moment to make that thing happen and just notice how much more productive you'll be. So some more do the opposites. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but like regular exercise, 
um, can often create a two times quicker memory uh, and improve your cognition. Like even especially leg exercises, like 20 minutes of uh, leg exercises were found to enhance long-term memory by about 10%. And if anti-aging is important to you, it's another good reason to do the opposite. So finding the type of exercise that you love. So I often give myself like, you know, I'll get to like four or 5 p.m. If it's windy out, then I'll go kite surfing. And I absolutely love it. And it works every muscle in my body, helps me breathe. But then I'm super recharged the next day. The other thing is, is can you have a meeting outside? So I work with groups outside all the time. I really help them dial in into deep conversations. But outside, a hard conversation is typically tenderized by the beauty of nature. When you're outside, there's just something about it. The biophilic response really helps settle things down. But we tend to distract ourselves. So we have to be really careful not to multitask um, and get, you know, we tend to think we're going to be more efficient, but again, that multitasking actually takes us away from being present and being productive. So I'm, I want you to just be careful about how often you're trying to do multiple things at once, because we tend to think that we're taking a shortcut, but I guarantee you most of the time it, it doesn't work that way. So real quick, I want to ask you about body sensations, because if we're trying to design for spaces and be really conscientious of how spaces are. How is it that we're in tune with our own bodies right now where we're at? So just close your eyes for a second. And I want you to kind of scan from the top of your head on across your eyes, your jaw, the back of your head, your neck, your shoulders, your throat, your chest area, your solar plexus, your belly, your belly button on down across your hips and through your legs. Just notice, do you feel any sensations at all? You don't need to be judgmental, but just notice those sensations and write into the chat box right now what you noticed. Was there anything there? Because a lot of times or the majority of the times when I work with people, there's nothing there. They're like, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel anything. And then I ask a few more questions and then they start to acknowledge, well, yeah, actually, oh yeah, that is, Hmm, I do feel something there. We ignore and we override the way our body feels all the time that we kind of forget what's, what's going on. So what do you guys have? Uh, let's see. Ache in the middle of the back from Amanda. Yeah, all right. And Katie said, right arm, mouse, hand tingles. Mm. Okay, tight, tightness in my upper back. Martha said, lower back. Uh, Florence said, neck and tight jaw. Veronica said, my neck. Anybody else? Um, a nap. Oh, some Jennifer's ready to nap. Okay, good. Uh, tight shoulders, Lisa. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I'm noticing a lot of back and shoulders and neck area. So would you guys be interested in knowing? Well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing screen for a second. I want to ask you guys first, where do you typically experience sadness? Just point to the area. I'll say it because I have a microphone, but my stomach. My, my stomach too. Yep. My okay. gut. Anybody else experience that? And someone said, uh, Linda said your eyes. Dawn said your eyes. Anybody else? Uh, your eyes. Yeah. So definitely in the eyes and the chest area is typically where sadness is felt. Those of you that said your stomach, where do you feel fear? Jaw. Okay. Anybody else feel fear uh, in a different location? my uh right up here my chest my mm -hmm. chest and jaw yep. right here okay. this is interesting i so wonder maybe the stomach too I, I hear where you're going and i i think maybe now that you said that it is yeah. it tightens up so, your stomach in fact when something jolts you i think the stomach is the first response right yep exactly so the stomach is typically where fear is felt now these are based on thousands of studies with uh, I'm sorry, studies with thousands of people. And what they found is that we all experience the five primary or five core emotions in the same places. So stomach is fear, chest is sadness. Where do you think anger is? I think that's right here. Yeah. 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 So the jaw, the neck, the back, the shoulders, this whole area, like when you see in the cartoons, the face getting really red, that's all, that's all anger. So you might be thinking, wow, I have a chronic neck problem. Does that really mean I'm angry? Well, it very well could be. How about joy? Where do you feel joy? 
<laughs> What's that? <laughs> Define. Yeah, so. Come on now. <laughs> oh, Laurel. <laughs> so joy usually starts in the heart and radiates outward. Right? I think the limbs. I, I think, don't you, when you when you feel like really good about something, yeah. you kind of your My limbs start hands. going. You're like, ah, yeah. you know, exactly. I do that a lot, yeah. which yeah, I feel. Then that. they lock me up. Exactly. So here's yeah. just like a a quick summary. And creativity is more in the erogenous zone. So there's like the breakdown of the five core emotions and where they're typically felt. Um, and what's important to know about that is is like how are you feeling in different spaces? Like mm -hmm. if you really tune in and close your eyes, how is it that you're experiencing any of these things? Are, are any of these emotions coming up or any of these sensations, these kinds of sensations on the right hand side, are any of these coming up when you're in a space? Is a space helping you alleviate one of these core emotions? Do you feel less anger when you're in a particular space? So I'm just asking these questions so that you can tune into like, how is it that you're designing with this in mind and how in tune are you so that you can be better designing those spaces? And most important, how often are you playing out in nature? Because playing out in nature is super key to actually activating our creativity. I wanna see a raise of hands. How many of you uh, actually have played outside like full on play, gotten dirty lately? Anybody? Don, okay. Were you gardening? Allison, it looks like you were. I was definitely gardening, and Katie is the queen of playing in nature, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it's a long list. <laughs> it's, good. But it's like well, your background is Montana, so you're like, it's the rivers and the hikes and all of it. Well, that's, yeah, so Florence that's isn't playing good. enough. Are you? Florence might be saying that I need to give her more time off. We're, we'll discuss that offline. Dog sleddings. <laughs> so, Evelyn is dog sledding. How cool is that? I have a question. Yep. I didn't go. I have a question for Yancy. Yancy, what happens when you walk into a space and um, you feel you feel really great in that space, and I get that burst of serotonin, or you walk into a space and you feel like oh, I don't like this place. Doesn't I don't connect with this place, and my cortisol spikes. Is that part of that diagram that you showed us? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I'm just recommending that you tune in more often to what's going on. It may have nothing to do with the space. It may have something to do with the space. But the more that you start to tune in with your emotions and your senses, like the, the better you're going to be able to design spaces with, where, you know, where Laura's gonna go about the design, the better you'll be able to do that type of design to look at how we're, we're showing up in these spaces. Like I feel endless uh, creative flow when I'm working in, in my space. Like I just have, constant surrounded access to nature. Um, it's light and bright and uh, really easy to interact in. I feel a major difference when I go into spaces that have like, you know, blinds in the windows, I can't really see out. Um, it feels darker, it feels heavier, I feel less creative flow. So it depends on what you're designing for, but that's so important to look at how you're experiencing your own emotions. And the, the biophilia might really play a role in this, right? So I have to tell a, uh, share a personal story, right? Post-divorce, right? Husband left me for the 22-year-old, the whole nine yards. And um, it was a really difficult two years for me. But every single morning, I had this lovely two-acre piece of property in sort of a 1980s ranch that I had totally remodeled, big old windows, big old French doors, and a horse paddock out back and a swimming pool out back. Every morning I woke up thinking that my house is filled with my three amazing daughters. And I looked out the window and said, but you don't have that. That was always, and that got the giddy. That was a, a spatial response that was with me every single morning for two years until I worked my way through that whole situation. And it was absolutely driven by the view I had the space I had created for myself, that was something. And I, I realized that wherever he was living in some apartment, he didn't have that. And, and I did. And, and so it was kind of a little, <laughs> um, but it, it really was one of the, and this is years ago, but for me, probably the most profoundly impacting experiences of where an interior slash exterior impacts how I feel and how I cope with life. 
Really important. Well, I just want to make sure that we've got plenty of time to bounce back and forth with Laura. Um, <laughs> I, want to, I want to wrap up really quick uh, with where I was going. The, the biophilic response piece, I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to get into, but the bottom line is that you know, the, the benefits from being in nature, if you want inspired, if you want to create a pattern interrupt for yourself, the biophilic response is so powerful. So even if it's like five or 10 minutes to just go outside, you know, jump, bounce, walk around, have a, a phone call that way, the more you can do that, the more it's going to enhance your creative flow. The other thing is, um, I just want to summarize like the, the three steps of wellness, like Again, do the opposite of what you think you have time for as it relates to going out in nature, as it relates to exercise, as it relates to napping, meditation, uh, eating healthy, or you know, cleaning your house, whatever. And then just notice those things that distract you or pull you away from your self-care because those are the things that often, whether it's your devices, social media, those are the things that are sucking the life out of us and sucking the creativity out of us. So with that, if you want um, this presentation or if you want to reach out to me, ask more questions or want to be part of a future uh, or be, attend a future presentation, here's my email, here's my website. Please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm really excited about sharing this platform with, with you all and the ideas of how much our senses can enhance who we are as humans, especially if, if you're in a steam room or if you're in an environment where you can actually close off everything else uh, at least you can tune in to other senses that we tend to ignore and don't spend time with. So that's that's it for now. Yancy, are people able okay. to visit you right now in, in all the craziness that is COVID? Have you have you blocked this? January off? January forward. Okay. Good to know. We'll be there. Yeah. Yes. We'll be, that's we'll good to know for booking. <laughs> so so, so Laura yes. taking these amazing Woo. and so important components. And I know you already are kind of sort of living in this parallel universe to, to what Yancey is talking about, but what are some of the suggestions that you have for designers, particularly kind of keeping in mind, A, what the designer can do for themselves before they share that with clients, but also how does this impact how we need to think about space design? Well, gosh, you know, Yancy, it's it's uh, such a I'm I'm overwhelmed with excitement and inspiration from what you've presented because I think you're so right about how we underestimate the power of our alignment and how easy it is for us to all get off that path and even if we feel like we're on it and doing a portion of what we need to do for our true self care. We usually have one foot on the road and one foot off because we're entrepreneurs, we're you know busy designers, we're in a service business where we put our clients first, the, you know, the cobbler's kids have no shoes mentality, which is kind of old school and I'm kind of over it uh, because I'm not serving anyone if I'm not centered and aligned. But if that's easier said than done at times, especially when you are now, we're all experiencing being at home with kids in the next room and husband's home. And it's just different. Our whole, our whole alignment, so to speak, is um, I think it's a blessing that it's been kind of put off. It's like going to the chiropractor after after a certain condition for a bad hip that you've had for five years, you've learned to adapt to it. And all of a sudden you go to a dance class or you go to a yoga and you go to the doctor and all of a sudden it hurts more because your body has been so conditioned to adapting to the pain or the chronic confusion or the misalignment that we tend to subconsciously avoid that change. So we kind of stay in that rut, believing our own self-talk that we somehow have one foot in the lane of self-care, so we're still doing good. Um, and the idea that moving forward into a, a dare I say, a post-COVID world, um, and moving into um, the with the design industry being so much um, a, a virtual and visual component to the way people are feeling, they can have control over their environments now with all the data that we've had and collected um, for the last 30 years and now we have at our fingertips. Now we have this, this very fertile opportunity 
for the design community to really affect positive change. And when we say design can change your world and it can, you know, it's all these wonderful things, it's tended to be overused and oh, we're over conditioned to think that, yeah, right. But the truth is, is it really does and it really can. And we really do have tools that we as the design community have a responsibility to um, bringing to our clients and bringing to ourselves. Um, one of the most important ways that we can translate um, the, the energy which goes beyond sales is to understand it for ourselves. So what Yancey is saying, which is so uh, inspiring is that we have to turn this inward before we can put it out there in the effort. Before it radiates, it has to radiate from something. So giving ourselves as designers, the um, taking the steps to recognize these things that Yancey's bringing up to implement into our homes, even if it's a small, tiny little area at home, if it's a small office, one of the reasons why I love my office so, and literally we are on top of each other, bursting at the seams is this tree right out my window on the second floor. And it is truly, when I walk in every day, I open my blinds and I go, I take the same deep breath, Veronica, that you took. I will, I do my belly breathing because I feel that it is, it is the reason why I'm staying in this <clears throat> space because it does change the way I operate throughout the day. So having that said, how do we, um, how have I in, interpreted this information working with the Ronald McDonald House and the oncology units and the psychotherapy units to try to, when we redesigned the LA um, facility, we had so much data at our fingertips that was actually 10 years ago, it was brand new, sort of, so to speak. And now we have 10 years of practicing those and implementing those tools, such as uh, textures. Really bottom lining it, which I think we've all had some experience. I think I'm talking to us as a, a collective group of like minds. We've all heard the five senses. We've all heard we need to engage them. Uh, but I think what Veronica said about starting at your core, aligning ourselves first is vital to being able to create grace and resolve when we, when we go to translate that information to our clients. I think that one of the biggest ways that I've changed the trajectory of the ways we design was to be brave about asking the tough questions and having the data to back up with a response that's, that informs a better solution. So when we ask questions that are what might have been considered taboo in the past, which is, you know, how do you deal with anxiety? Your kids, do any of them suffer from creative challenges like ADHD, Tourette's, anxiety, depression? We don't talk about this. And I don't know why it's 90% of the human population is dealing with anxiety on some level. And now the kids are being grown up and cultivated in an, in an anxiety driven family. And they're having anxiety driven school classrooms. And it's, kind of a wonderful opportunity for us to just say, okay, look, I admit it. I've got three kids that are highly, highly creative. One service, it, one has, deals with terrible depression and debilitating social anxiety. One DP has OCD and my other has ADHD and Tourette's syndrome. So, and, and, and going back to my dear, sweet, beautiful Martha, STEAM has been one of the components that we were able to implement on a zero budget, because <laughs> that was pre-Mr. STEAM, that integrated STEAM music, chroma, and aromatherapy um, as a response to um, not maybe, uh, it, it balanced out any medication that we were dealing with. So being able to see, say as designers, we have these tools now, ask the tough question, go underneath and say, let's get personal. Use those first few meetings to be brave and say, I've got you, I, I've got you. And you know, you're safe and start that conversation because it will change the future. Uh, 
we consult with specifically with families who have children that are on the spectrum that are dealing with these because my three have, I've learned with an insatiable um, driven urge to solve my own problems, I've collected a, a massed quite a bit of information. So we apply this and then we take the tools that Yancey is talking about, like saying, okay, we're going to do a real true analysis here. We're going to go through your space. We're going to sit and it takes longer time than we may. We have to put that into our budget people. We have to put that into the, to the fees, but part of creating something that's going to last a lifetime is cr creating an understanding and watching, looking at body language when you're walking through their home, sit inside each space with a cup of tea or a glass of water and say, let's just sit for a minute. So tell me about this room. Tell me where the kids do their homework. Tell me how they're doing in school. What are some of the messages you're getting back from the teachers? How do your husband and you, where do you deal with conflict? Why, what, tell me about your childhood. Do you do Christmas, uh, Rosh Hashanah? Do you do whatever? How do you celebrate your holidays? Is it, and watch their body. If they talk about the holidays and all of a sudden their jaw goes and their stomach tightens up, you know right away that's a subject you have to deal. Yeah, you have to deal with it, you know? And I think as designers, this conversation is so profoundly important. I'm so passionate about it because it truly can be a way. It's like we're building new containers for the crazy. That in 10 years, the crazy will subside because of these containers we're now building. So Flo, if you wanna hit me up, girl, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that we actually take these uh, elements. And um, okay, so here's a project that we did, which was a, purely sustainable mental wellness pursuit. Um, a lot of what we do when we're designers and we talk about finishes and textures have a lot to do with that first stage of aesthetics. But when we talk about touch, it's very important when you are dealing with your clients to, when you're asking those tough questions, to actually have them touch the materials, bring certain samples and things, see what they're attracted to, because touch is very important, texture is very important. One of the things that we wanted to do here in this space was to create a space that um, apply the data that we have about eye tracking. One of the most important ways that we um, deal with reducing stress, and I know Yancey, you could probably speak to this and feel free to chime in, is the way we track through space, way we go in different levels. What is the retina doing with color? How is that transmitting information to the brain? And what is that doing to our emotional wellness? What elements can we provide our clients that spark, I hate, am I saying this, spark joy, um, but really spark wellness. For example, this particular client said one of her most wonderful childhood memories was going to um, her family member, another family member's house, and they had a Dutch door. So how can we say that every time she looks at that Dutch door, she's going to recall something that's going to transmit a certain serotonin, certain dopamine that's going to neuroconnect in the body. It's going to send messages to the body of joy, which is going to either stimulate joy in the hands or it'll relax the belly. But that's all alignment. Can you imagine surrounding yourself with things that wherever you look, wherever your eye tracks, it's creating stimulating wellness. So that was one of the things that we element. So that comes as a direct understanding of first the wellness factor that Yancey is bringing up and then translating that with really deep questionnaires and analysis in your first step of the process. And then taking that back to your drawing board and figuring out what does that look like in those spaces? We also did something taboo. We removed the typical um, lights that usually land up over an island. And one of the things that I learned with working with the Ronald McDonald house was with that tracking was when we're negotiating light, it's, it's very profoundly intrusive if it's not, if it's not um, designed for the actual 
person is living in it. So for example, when you have two very tall people living in a home and you're 32 inches above your island where your pendant is going to lie, you're constantly trying to have a conversation and negotiating pendants over your island. So be brave, get rid of them. It's the most important thing is to deliver a project that's personal for that client. The other thing we did was add artwork that also enables, uh, you know, hypnotic kind of meditative quality. So this was tone on tone. It was just a simple sketch. It didn't over deliver too much abstract art, but yet it was completely modern and elegant and contemporary in the space without it being intrusive. Giving yourself plenty of counter space, smooth counter space with lots bringing in the daylight um, was very important in this space in particular as well, keeping the color tones um, natural and organic. And also everything that we used in this kitchen was sustainably, um, sustainably built. So, um, and on the, when we're working with commercial property, we do the same thing as Yancey's saying, he's working with um, uh, corporate uh, entities and teams. One of the greatest things that we've seen in the last 15, 20 years are establishing these large corporations as Yancey well knows, is to establish playgrounds in our spaces. So, um, Flora, if you can go to the next one. Oh, this is not commercial. Well, this is another, yeah, this is a commercial space where uh, when we're designing for path of travel, path of travel can, can increase stress or reduce stress considerably. So open up your corridors, create uh, cable management, which, and, which can be also create a lot of distraction when we're designing spaces. Open up those windows so that you have a lot of, uh, a lot of visibility to the exterior surroundings and sound is very important when we when we design for commercial spaces so uh, building in additional acoustic soffits that create um, better sound really holistically does increase the productivity in a space um, and the next one see flow yeah, so we go back here. This was a, a project that, again, had specifically integrated uh, elements and fabrics and textures and patterns uh, specifically that the client knew was going to create reduced stress. So the tribal pattern was something that went back to her childhood. Lots of open windows, non-intrusive Roman shades with the same color white paint, kept the space really open. Again, lack of scanning and in, you know, you're not that all that intrusion happening while you're trying to relax in a space. And kitchens are typically the most busy spaces in the house. And the same goes for all the spaces that we design. So, I mean, to sum it up, I think one of the biggest takeaways for for me when I'm listening to Yancey is to, um, like anything, become emotionally connected to the wellness first in your core and to create, it has to be radiant from there. Start small, create a small area, like we said, some sort of an altar of wellness in your space that you know when you present yourself to that space, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like you're creating your own sense of accountability visually in a space like an altar does um, that, that reminds you to put the phone down and to create 15 minutes of wellness. I'm all for napping, uh, all for napping. But I mean, I think one of the most important things that we can take from this for me is to is the alignment and how do we execute that? First, ask the tough questions, go underneath, dare to be intimate with the clients. Um, it's not always appropriate. Sometimes you have e-design and sometimes you have designers that they just basically want a certain type of service. But when you're going in and really changing the trajectory of a family, um, and their environment is very, very important. I see so many heads shaking. I'm so happy that we all know how important it is to be brave, to be leaders in our community, to, they've been, let's face it, for the most part, they've been fed, and I've said this before, they've been a diet of Swedish fish and, and Diet Coke in the area of design and wellness. And I think now's the time that we have an ear and a voice to be able to translate this data 
and to find tools like playing outside, like creating standing up every 15 minutes, turning on the music and taking a dance break. Dance breaks in our, in our company is huge. There isn't a day that we don't take a dance break. So whatever it is that you have to do. And then when you go into these homes using tools like, I mean, steam, it's, it's probably the perfect, it's probably the first place that we should go. It's relative, you know, it's relatively affordable. I, I present it on every project as a possibility. We've just done so many Mr. Steam units that are truly, truly changing people's lives. And it truly has changed my son's life in the way he deals with his Tourette's and his OCD and his ADHD. Markedly so um, that it is, um, it's just so, so, so important. I mean, I'm, and it can change children's lives that are on the spectrum, paint colors, textures, rugs, the fibers in the rugs, the fibers in the materials that we present and select, the off-gassing, the, the light, daylight, always work by a window, you know, if you can, incorporating it, take off the shades and, and let the natural rhythms of the sun and the moon cast your hours, you know, that you are operating. And it's just an important thing for us to be aligned with the sun and the moon and the energy uh, as we possibly can, and then get a plant. One plant. Okay. Just and one a, plant? Plants. <laughs> one. This is my plant. Me, it's always for And I would love it. Get a plant. Oh, uh, Laura, that that was so, so good. I, I, I don't know how you weren't distracted by just the scrolling comments and uh, kudos, compliments, and high fives in 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 the chat but you know, personally just thank you so much for for sharing your your personal your personal story but then also you know how how you've worked through it and how you're also presenting to clients not on the design side here on the tech side but i just i'm fascinated by it and of course you know i'm always i'm kind of always working at that intersection here and you know i think that there's the music therapy side of things that's part of the mr steam and you know as as some of the comments were were coming in from amanda on the tech side acoustics those kinds of things just so many things you can do do. Um, and you really, you, you, so many questions at the front of my mind, but I know, and one that I saw come up repeatedly and that's front of my mind as well is, okay, daring to be intimate and asking those tough questions when it's health related. Can you kind of throw out some examples of how you go into that conversation just to sort of give, give everybody here a, a, yeah, a few tools I mean, to start making it their own? Yeah. I mean, I think sort of part, thank you for that. Um, I think part of, um, practice is practice is going to make you better at this and make you more authentic to the way you ask. At first, it can be a little um, mechanical the way you ask questions for a particular question is, is that literally take your clients around their house and ask them, where do you deal with conflict? Where do your children do their homework? What is your morning and your evening routine rituals? Where do you deal with celebrating? Where do you celebrate? Give me two or three childhood memories that make you smile or make you tear up with joy. What are some of the smells that you, that when you smell them, they make you feel a certain way? You know, I'm a pumpkin spice person all the way. Um, but to me, it's like the thing that just, I go right back and I'm completely energized. I can feel my body literally triggered in a positive way that gives me a physical energy boost. And it's just smelling or smelling home cooked meal, you know, roasted potatoes. And uh, those kinds of things are very important. We cannot overlook the way those things are are, are changing people's lives. So when they, when you go into their kitchen and you trying to design a kitchen, it's not as easy as just fitting the appliances into the square footage that you have. It's about trying to diagnose what their lifestyle is and then being brave enough to know more, to create a safe space for them to be vulnerable first, and then share a story or two of your own that kind of segues and grants permission to them to be vulnerable. I always share my story about, uh, you know, about my kids who are so super amazingly high functioning now. Yes, we were scrappy in the beginning, but watching them develop and watching all the changes that we had to make in the home to accommodate homework times, because you cannot 
ask a child to come home, sit at the island, have their cookies and milk, do their homework, take a bath, and then have a half an hour of, of screen time. That isn't going to happen for 50% of the kids now. It's just not possible. So understanding that it's okay to create homework spaces that are separate, homework spaces that bring in the moonshine or the sunshine. My one kid has to study at night. He's a night baby. The other ones just want to get out of the way at three o'clock. So creating these zones, but how the hell are we going to know if we're not sitting down and asking questions? What are your rhythms of your kids? Who makes the coffee in the house? Who, what, what things in this house create arguments for your, and then always offer up some form of relating. Like, cause I think I've, been it through it all. I've been a single mom 14 years. I've been married. I have kids. I know what special needs are. You know, I've been here. I've been there. So share those stories. I think as designers, we have this wonderful opportunity to crawl in bed. We crawl in bed with their budgets. We crawl in bed with their families. We know what their underwear looks like. And then all of a sudden we don't talk about this and this and this. It's stupid. We need to talk about it, but we need to be able to be responsible enough and accountable that when they are vulnerable, we have responses. So do your homework, make a list of the things that feel safe, that you experiences that you can share and, and let it all go. Don't be afraid. I remember sitting in Kravitz showroom, talking to my client during a, one of our first meetings, because I felt that just being out and having a shopping day for me with before we even started designing, just to kind of have lunch, find out what inspired her, and then watching. Watching what she kept picking up gave me a lot of information. She wasn't being held accountable. She didn't have to make a commitment, but it was just flowing. What does she order for lunch? What are her habits? And then talking, and I said, brought up, you know, anxiety. You know, my son is, is suffers when, from debilitating anxiety. That's one of the fabrics that I've used. And I start the conversation. All and this is, th this is exactly what you're saying. You know, you guys, you guys always Anything listen happens. and, and oftentimes the output then becomes an aesthetic one. Um, and oftentimes what I still am confronted with very often with designers is uh, that people then start applying this knowledge and then turning it into a top down sale. Well, let's look at some technology. Amanda Wildman just was saying, you know, from the tech side, I have to automate these things. So looking at it not from a making it tech, making it wellness, uh, but making it the benefit and coming at it from the bottom up into those benefits, I think is is really important. I mean, the design community, and I know we have to wrap it up for today, uh, but the design community uh, and interior design, kitchen and bath design, architecture, impact lives. Uh, I can't personally stress it often enough. I worry so much about designers just thinking about, oh my God, that's that client bought that sofa. Let them buy the sofa, charge them by the hour because you bring so much value to them. I, I wanted to quickly, before we do wrap up, and I know Mar Martha wanted to kind of uh, 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 kind of just remind us of a few important points about Mr. Steam as well. But Lisa Khan is, is in the room today and she has an amazing group finding sanctuary. So if you guys have a, have a chance to, to hop on over there, because Lisa, your, your whole life and your work revolves around uh, well-being and, and sanctuary. So I know I wanted to connect you to Yancey. So we'll do that, we'll do that offline. Um, but I think it's it's really, really important to, to feel empowered by the impact that you guys have on how people live 24 hours a day. We have no problem paying a doctor for a sort of inconsequential answer after 30 minutes and, and they make 500 bucks. Uh, and, and as a designer, I think it's really important to kind of appreciate your own value more. I always have to get that one out because it's still, you guys are so undervalued um, and, and you know, knowing how to apply these um, these tools and knowing how to listen and get this information from the client is is really important. So, so Martha, I know I know we're going to do a giveaway. You did say that, yeah. And, uh, and I think we're all going to go to Puerto Rico. We are. <laughs> That's not the giveaway. That's the giveaway. Yeah. Yay! Uh, right here. You go to Puerto Rico. You go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But 
thank you guys so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. I would like to continue the conversation. Any kind of questions you have that we didn't get to today, please post those in comments. Martha and her team are there to answer those. I know Yancy is in the KBI group as well, as is Laura, of course. So if you guys have questions, please uh, come back and uh, review pieces of the recording, uh, ask questions and, uh, and continue the conversations. And we will work on continuing the deep, deep dive from a tech perspective, uh, from a product perspective. We're not gonna let this sleep. There's so much to learn and this is all we could cover in slightly over an hour. So <laughs> we've gotta, gotta wrap it up for today, but thanks a lot. Oh, one more thing. No, Linda, please uh, unmute yourself for a second. You have a giveaway for people you just offered to me offline. So Actually, have thanks. It. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm actually, I created a conference uh, around this. It was supposed to be Toronto Canadian centric and because of COVID it went global. And uh, so, so disregard the name because right now it's called livablecanada.com. Um, we have over 30 international speakers coming in from Denmark, Australia and different places to all talk about this. And as a matter of fact, Yancy and, 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 you know, and, and Laura and several others here should be speakers next year. So it's all about residential. It's really supporting the residential. Uh, it's about bringing wellness uh, or understanding the wellness that we need to bring in the home. It's giving you a lot of knowledge and information and the power to really go out there and change, be the change that we need in the residential community across North America. So started off as a small little event with 200. We're gonna probably see over a thousand people there. And I'd like to offer up to everybody here today, um, if you'd like a free pass to come, it's $2.99 Canadian. I left everything in Canadian dollars. If you want a free pass, happy to do it. Just go to livablecanada.com. And in the registration uh, section, when you go in through that, there is a, a field for promo code. Type in Linda, all caps, guest, lower cast, uh, lowercase, so Linda, and then lowercase guest, Linda Guest, and that will give you a free pass. It's worth $2.99. It's happening October 28th, uh, 29th, 30th. What's really important is, is it is on demand and live sessions, but you can download all 30 plus um, sessions. And we've got some really amazing speakers, like soup, like even our closing speakers and astronaut that that will really talk about, like he's passionate about what health and what design is gonna look like in outer space. So like there's some really cool, it's got people from 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 a stager to the to some of the biggest architect firms coming. So we're we're trying so awesome. to really help residential design. So that's my gift to all of you. My bigger gift and my bigger thanks is to you, Veronica, for inviting me into your group. I thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks for joining us and thanks for the gracious gift. Thank you again, Mr. Steam and Martha. Um, you know, we're, we're getting close to our 10 year anniversary. We need to do something really special. We need to go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I think so. Funny how Nancy, that keeps coming up. <laughs> a pleasure as always. And uh, Laura, thank you for all your insights. And Katie, I'll thank see you. you guys next week. S see you next week. Same, same time, same place. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.